our current system of government, governmental powers are shared by three main branches, namely Congress, which makes the laws, the President, who executes legislative enactments, and the Supreme Court, which interprets them. Under the so-called tripartite allocation of authority, the powers exercised by each branch are separate and independent. But the three great branches of government are intended to be neither antagonistic nor subservient to one another in the discharge of their responsibilities. Rather, they are expected to coordinate their functions to achieve governmental objectives. At the same time, they check one another to prevent abuse in the exercise of their respective powers. These functions of coordinating and checking characterize our government and differentiate it from many other countries in our region of the world. In the scheme of things, the Philippine judiciary thus plays an important role in set settling judicial and justiciable controversies. Refuge has been sought from the judiciary in every conceivable conflict among individuals in civil and commercial relations and between individuals on the one hand and the state on the other as when criminal laws are transgressed. Classes between an individual's constitutional rights and the state powers or prerogatives have also been brought to the courts for resolution. And occasionally, conflicts that arise between the major organs of government, in this case, between the Senate and the President over EO 464, are also brought before the Supreme Court of the Philippines for adjudication. I believe it is the dependence on and resort to the Supreme Court that gives strength and respect to the Philippine judiciary. This case involving EA 464 is the first time that the Senate of the Philippines has become a petitioner against the President of the Philippines in the Supreme Court of the Philippines. For sure, the bench is no match to the authority of the legislature to control the budget of the country and to impeach the President, the Vice President, and the Supreme Court justices, or the power of the chief executive to command the armed forces and the police. Nonetheless, in every confrontation, on every occasion in which the Supreme Court has been called upon to wade into legal disputes, such as that over EO 464, it has always taken courage and performed its constitutional duty with integrity and independence. Its very weakness, namely its lack of budget and police powers, has become its strength when it dares speak through objective and well-reasoned decisions that uphold the rule of law and the supremacy of our Constitution. The real strength of our Supreme Court and of the entire judiciary lies not in brute power or patronage, but in its moral courage, born of competence, independence, and integrity to perform its constitutional mandate at all times and against all odds. In a sense, our Supreme Court, if we may say so ourselves, may be likened to the titular heads of government in other countries, the king in the case of Thailand, the queen in England, and the governor general in Australia. True, they possess no direct power. However, they command respect and obedience and serve as stabilizing figures when the winds of turmoil rock the sheep of state. In the same manner, I would like to believe that the Philippine Supreme Court, though it has very little physical power, wields influence 
by the sheer strength of reason, law, and persuasion, by standing steadfast in upholding the rule of law, it anchors the Philippine ship of state when it encounters turbulence and millstones. The court decisions are not made on the basis of what is popular or even newsworthy. The Philippine Supreme Court believes it is essential that it must continuously retain the trust and confidence of the litigants and of the public. For this reason, upon assuming the Chief Justiceship of our country on December 21, 2005, I vowed to lead a judiciary characterized by four ills, integrity, independence, industry, and intelligence. And one that battles what I call the acid problems of one, limited access to justice by the poor, corrupt, two, corruption, three, incompetence, and four, delay in the delivery of quality judgments, all four of which corrode the people's trust and confidence in our courts. I have emphasized that efforts to build public trust in the judiciary should ultimately be directed towards much loftier objectives of protecting the liberty and nurturing the prosperity of our people. Simply put, this judicial philosophy postulates that, one, in litigations involving civil liberties, the scales, the scales should weigh heavily against the government and in favor of the poor, the oppressed, the marginalized, the dispossessed, and the weak. We refer to this as heightened scrutiny of governmental actions. And two, in conflicts affecting prosperity and development, deference must be accorded to the political branches of the government, namely the presidency and Congress. We refer to this as deferential interpretation of the laws. I would not want to impose, impose much further on your time by discussing in depth these twin beacons of liberty and prosperity as I have done in other fora. Suffice it to state for the moment that the political liberty of our people, the clarion call of the past, must be continuously safeguarded in the present and in the future. But more than that, courts must also nurture the prosperity of our people. To be relevant, courts must be constantly attuned to the needs of the present and the vagaries of the future so that they can respond in a timely and prudent manner to the people's ever-expanding well-being. History will judge how the Philippine Supreme Court has acted and will act on the burning issues of today and tomorrow. Along with the members of my court, I hope that history will judge us kindly and fairly, and on the basis of the judiciousness and wisdom of our decisions. More important, we hope that by its ruling, our court shall continue to serve as the anchor of the Philippine ship of state in the most trying times of our history. May I close by thanking you once again for this testimonial. Maraming salamat po.